from time immemorial, our ancestors have put a deep meaning into any of their occupations, and the subtleties of different crafts were kept, passing from generation to generation. These are details, important accents, of which the culture and way of living of the Great Steppe civilization were built for centuries. The School of Nomads is for studying the past, creating the present to build the future. Today in the program, Craft Center Kazakuner. Pottery is the oldest craft. Jewelry art of nomads. Craft culture is the spiritual wealth of any people. Ancient masters of the Great Steppe put deep meaning into them while creating any of their works. That's why our crafts are like a nation code. Thanks to craftsmen, the history of life, way of life, and character of our ancestors have reached this. A number of modern masters know ancient technologies, such as the leather working, wood, bone. And today, they are reviving our ancient crafts. Thanks to them, today that ancient objects are recreated, which carry all the beauty of antiquity in themselves. One of the vivid examples of the revival of traditions is the Almaty Center of Artisans, Kazakuner, which gather the most powerful masters of their craft. To get to know them better, see their creations, I went to a wonderful center of artisans. Indeed, here the spirit of nomads is fully felt. Despite the fact that these works are the work of modern masters, they all convey the national idea, culture, and character of my people. Hello, Aigul. Hello. How are you? Fine. My name is Samad. I'm exploring our traditional crafts. Today, I came to your unique center, where you can find wonderful works of the best masters. I wanted to see all these things and, of course, get acquainted with the masters, learn their craft. What do you think? They will show you. Thank you. Aigul Jansarikova is a talented master who uses ancient techniques in her works and gives her works a national flavor. And the poet Chakarim was right when he said that it is not possible to find a new one having lost respect for the old. The craft center, Kazakhoner, is a unique place. There was no such project in Kazakhstan yet, because here you can not only see and buy the work of our artisans, but also meet the masters personally, to see how they create their work. The center is open to both citizens and tourists. Our guests can get to know the history of crafts and thus touch the Kazakh culture. The history of our applied art has deep roots and originates from the culture of the Saks, Uysuns, Kipchaks, Huns, and Karluks. Significant influence was rendered by the culture of the peoples of southern Siberia, Central Asia, and Russia. Thus, our crafts, which were in constant transformation and continue to develop today. By the way, the main idea of the message of the head of state is also spiritual revival. This means the development of our culture, crafts, and traditions of our ancestors. Each people is able to show their history, way of life only through their culture, with the help of certain subjects. This is their music, their applied art. 
Therefore, artisans are some cultural ambassadors. After going to various exhibitions abroad, we show that we are Kazakhs with the help of the potency of national clothes, jewelry, various household items. These are our features. Therefore, as a people, we must equally develop both artisan art and music and songs. Yes, in this amazing place, you can not only see the magnificent works of craftsmen, everyone here can learn the basics of this or that craft. Separate rooms are allocated for each master. And I certainly want to understand the secrets of Kazakh masters. Bulbulapa, hello. Hello. How are you? Fine. Apa, my name is Samat. I researched the ancient crafts of our ancestors. And what do you do? This is a weaver's loom. This is a very ancient craft. It has been passed from generation to generation. Since ancient times, mainly various ribbons and pennants for the dwelling of nomads, yurts, were weaved. Today, few people are engaged in this. It can be said that this is a disappearing kind of craft. I learned it as a child. My mom, sisters, daughter-in-law wove with this machine. And I want to hand over my skills to the younger generation. This rather simple method is the basis of the traditional weaving craft. Easy to assemble this mobile tool is very convenient to use anywhere. There are two types of tools, one of which is suspended or stationed. On it, as a rule, people weave carpets and other cloths of large sizes. In front of us is a simple tool. This is what the nomadic Kazakhs used, because it can be easily assembled during moving from place to place. Our ancestors were quite inventive. Just see how they came up with this technology. To create these two threads, they created a crucifix and such a wooden saber. It's called saber. Now, as you see, there is a brown thread, so, and here is a brown thread. And to weave from them, a pattern mathematics is needed. Initially, you should stretch an odd number of strings. I am so attentive to watching this process, but I still do not understand much. Indeed, if we want the viscous to be correct and the patterns to be beautiful, mathematical precision is necessary. But before you sit down at the machine, the craftsman must continue to prepare the yarn. And first washing, drying and whipping the wool are needed. After the craftsman will spin to stain yarn. I have a workshop at home. So first of all, you need to spin the yarn. Then pull it out with three pegs. And so that the threads are not confused. Only due to the correct pulling of the thread, we are now working. Here is the whole algorithm. If you want to get more into the process, come to my workshop. I'll teach you all the details there. It would be great. Thank you, Bulbulapa. I will definitely come to visit you. So, bye. One of the first crafts mastered by a human is pottery. With the help of ceramic dishes, archaeologists determine the historical periods and its features. In the center of Casa Huner, there is also a pottery workshop. Hi, Aidana. How are you? Good day. My name is Samad. I want to learn about such an ancient craft as pottery. 
and of course, try to make some pottery. Of course, come on, take off your clothes. I'll show you everything. Mm -hmm. So, let's start. How's your mood? Excellent. What about you? Fine. Click on the pedal. Is it comfortable for you? Yes, it's convenient. And what is this clay? It is an ordinary natural clay. So, any clay suits? No. In the chemical composition of the pottery glaze, there must be kaolin. Now I will put the clay in the center. And after that, we'll start work. You should always have wet hands. With this, there is a cup of water. Wet your hands and soak the clay too. To create any dishes, first of all, you need to keep the clay exactly in the center of the circle. You have to press this with both hands. Turn a little faster. Periodically wet the clay and then push it like this from above. I can't cope with it very well, probably because I'm doing this for the first time. But it seems to me that this craft can be easily learned. Such a fragile looking Aidana easily copes with the hardest clay. In other words, in this craft, you need both efficiency and creativity at the same time. The main tool here is the potter's wheel. Man invented it 7,000 years ago. And since then, the principle of its work has not changed. Circles today come from plastic, wood, metal, and stone. Of course, in ancient times, the potter's wheel was turned manually. Today, it is automated. Of course, this greatly facilitated the work of the master. Look at what we got. Oh, not bad at all. We set the mass in the center. Now we start making the desired dish. To do this, firmly hold the clay and quickly press the middle with your thumb. Do you understand? Let's start. So the cavity should be formed in the center. Yes. Let's try. Let's start. Your clay should always be wet. Aidana, and when did you become interested in this craft? Probably since childhood. I remember clay was in our yard and I played with it. Apparently, then I was already interested. Tell me about the history of the craft itself. Ceramics appeared in the stone century, probably somewhere in the Neolithic. At that time, people began to make pottery and could even burn it. At the archaeological excavations of various settlements and barrows, scientists are most likely to find ceramic products. Most often, pottery was used in household or for ritual ceremonies. The tribes that lived on our steppes made of clay did not only cook utensils, from this material, bricks and water pipes were made. After we have shaped our product, we need to remove it from the circle and put it to dry for 5 to 10 days. Then it will be sent to the baking oven. Then the product will be applied and covered with glaze. I also put my dishes to dry. Of course, it turned out uneven and not so beautiful. But I am encouraged by Aidana. She says it's not possible to get it from the first time. By the way, ancient people made dishes by another, more primitive technology. Aidana decided to show me this method. We decided to make a mug. It's simple. You should roll a rectangle out of clay, cut off excess and attach to opposite edges. These are the walls of the mug.
Now we'll sculpt the bottom. Its diameter should coincide with the diameter of the walls. In general, I like this method more. In my childhood, I did a clay like this. At the end, we fixed the handle, and we took our cup to dry too. Here, in this way, our ancient ancestors made dishes. Today, there are not many craftsmen, ceramists. Meanwhile, in recent years, the demand for such dishes has been growing. After all, it is made of environmentally friendly material. Therefore, I think that in this workshop, the amount of those who wish to learn pottery will only increase. One of the tasks of the center is to involve the younger generation in our crafts and culture. According to the masters, a child who not only sees different objects of everyday life, but touches them and tries himself to make something up, will be more and more deeply interested in his roots. For example, for these purposes, right inside the building, the Casa Hurt has been erected. This yurt is exhibited for master classes. This is mainly for school children. There is a smaller yurt. It is designed for toddlers. At the master class, I teach to build a yurt. I tell the guests about the origin of the nomad's dwelling, from which it stands, what customs and beliefs were associated with the yurt. Of course. Teaching the culture to children in practice is a great idea. And since this yurt is intended for children, then I go to the master jewelers. Hello. Hello. How are you? How are you? I am Samad. I am Nurjan. Very nice to meet you. I have visited your center to get closer acquainted with our folk crafts. I decided to come to you to see the work of Kazakh jewelers. I want to try to make some decoration myself. Will it work for me? I am glad. Of course it will. Come in. Thank you. Jewel crafting, perhaps one of the most prominent and representative kinds of crafts in the Kazakh steppe. To be a zerger, that is a jeweler, was always an honor. The owner of this noble profession, as a rule, took it from his father and passed it on to the children. This venerable occupation was passed on from generation to generation. The word zerger comes from the Persian zer, gold. Jewelry requires diligence, care, and accuracy. What will I learn to do? For the beginning, it is necessary to melt the silver. I'll show you how to do it. Here are these pieces of iron. This is silver? Yes, it's silver. We'll smelt it. Does it melt quickly? Yes, quickly. Oh, it's going to melt. And what will we do of it? We will make a bracelet. Oh, a bracelet! Zergers, with special taste, created women's jewelry. Kazakh women always wore massive chest decorations, earrings, bracelets, bracelets and rings. Jewel crafting has deep roots. According to archaeologists, it originated at the same time when the oldest miners began to find and smelt precious and non-ferrous metals on the territory of present Kazakhstan. Now we'll fill the molten silver into the form, then let pass it through the rolls. Mm -hmm. Silver melts at a temperature of 1000 degrees. We poured it into shape, cooled and cut off excess parts. Now let's pass this plate through jewelry rolls. This machine is for metal rolling, thus rollers We'll roll out the silver to the size we need. Here we rolled up the thickness you need.
Is it ready? Yes. What are we going to do next? Next look. We'll make with you. Such a bracelet. Wow, do you think I can make such a bracelet? Of course you can. I'll show you. First you need to glue the adhesive paper on our plate. Here is a bracelet. Do you see how it works out? Now it is have to be cut off by the contour. Yes. Look, Samat. We'll cut by this technology. <laughs> Follow the outline. Bracelet is one of the most common ornaments that a woman wears daily. They adorn themselves with it, both young girls and elderly women. By the way, parents wear small bracelets on girls who are already three years old. In the old days, the first thing that Jigit gave the girl was a bracelet. As they say, double bracelet. Such ornament meant that its owner was either engaged or already married. Most of the decorations of the Kazakhs are made of silver, because people had a special attitude to this metal. Our ancestors made not only jewelry from silver, but also all sorts of dishes. Because silver has bactericidal properties, it positively affects the human body. Oh, you see, what a bracelet you got. Beautiful, right? Yes. Now we remove the tool. Yes, you can. What do we do next? Now we'll solder such a plate. Do we glue it from the top? Yes, this way. The next stage of the process requires special skill. Therefore, I decided to give this piece of work to the Zergier. With the help of fire and special glue, it is possible to fix silver parts with each other. Our people showed their world outlook through their jewelry. By the way, in the last century, this art almost lost itself. However, in the last years, this craft is reborn again. Creating such amazing works, our Zergers will make history pages noble. So they deserve great respect. Friends, I did not even expect that I can make such a bracelet almost on my own. What do you think? Of course, it is beautiful. Now you can paint it. You can also decontaminate. Thank you for sharing time with me. And you showed almost the whole process. I wish you good health and good luck. Thank you. Come again. Of course. Thanks. Kazakh applied art, original, elegant, diverse, having meaning in any subject, and bearing in every detail important information, is the richest spiritual heritage. It is the traditional applied art of any people. It is a reflection of the history of this people, its formation and culture. All this must be carefully stored, revived, and developed for future generations. And in order to preserve our values and continue the cultural development of society, we need to develop spiritually rich, educated, and capable of developing younger generations.